It's a great pleasure today to be joined by Richard Weick, who is at Pew Research Center in Washington, DC. He's the director of the Global Attitudes Research Center there and uh, conducts comparative international polling um, on the US, also in Europe and, and the world beyond as well. And we're going to talk a little bit today about some of the trends that we're starting to see in public opinion research in the pandemic and particularly looking at um, different uh, views on how other countries are performing during the pandemic and that how that is affecting uh, nation's soft power and their broader image in the world. So welcome Richard. Thanks, thanks for having me. So let's start with the impact that the pandemic is having on public opinion overall and particularly I'm concerned about this question about how we think about our allies, our foes, our opponents in the world and how this is playing into broader trends around multilateralism. We uh, published some research recently which showed that Brits are hardening in their views towards many of our allies um, but they're also hardening in their views towards countries like China so there does seem to be a link between the perceived performance of nations as a kind of test of governance during the pandemic um, and how that's flowing back into uh, favorable or unfavorable attitudes amongst citizens. So for example, we found that Brits are uh, hardening in their views towards China, but they're also hardening in their views quite significantly towards the United States. I know you've just uh, published some new research on American attitudes and also German attitudes. So we'd be really interested to hear a bit more about those. Yeah, uh, you know, one of the things we've done uh, recently in our polling is, is asked Americans about uh, how well they think uh, different countries around the world are handling this, this epidemic, uh, this pandemic. And, and um, you know, what we see is that Americans make real distinctions between uh, different countries and how they're dealing with the crisis. Um, so, for instance, uh, most Americans think that South Korea uh, and Germany are doing a good job of dealing with the crisis, uh, and most Americans don't think Italy or especially China uh, are doing a good job of, of dealing with the crisis. Uh, Americans are split, by the way, on how well uh, the UK is dealing with it. Uh, they're also split in terms of how well they believe their own country is, is handling uh, the pandemic. Um, and, and of course, as you might expect, what you see is you know, sharply different views among Democrats and Republicans on that. You know, Democrats overwhelmingly say the U.S. isn't doing a good job of dealing with this. Uh, Republicans overwhelmingly say the U.S. is doing a, you know, a, a good job of handling the crisis. Um, and also we asked about the World Health Organization, uh, which has you know, gotten more attention probably than it's ever gotten before recently here in the U.S. And views about it have also become very partisan, uh, very polarized. Uh, Republicans you know, not approving of how WHO is dealing with the crisis, Democrats uh, saying WHO is doing a good job of handling it. So, you know, like so many other things in American public opinion, what you see on some of these questions that are about COVID and the international aspects of it, um, you know, it's very uh, polarized. Um, again, just like some of the other things that we see in US public opinion. That's a really interesting finding because uh, in the United Kingdom with our polling, one of the things that we were finding very striking uh, about the uh, collapse in public opinion towards the United States as a responsible actor in the world was that actually the biggest falls were from conservative voters who had traditionally actually been the most um, defensive of the United States and really continued to see it as our special relationship even during uh, President Trump's tenure. We're now down to a point in the UK where just 28% of Brits trust the United States to act responsibly in the world, which is really striking. Um, so you're seeing that the polarization in views about other countries' performance um, is being shaped by uh, the sort of political dimensions of the United States, or is it just that uh, the views about America's own performance is being shaped by that? Yeah, I mean, there, there are some differences when it comes to um, American views about how the rest of the world is handling it uh, and, and, and things like that, but um, there are sharper differences when you're talking about Americans' views of how their own country is dealing with it. And Americans do uh, have differing opinions too about how this is going to affect 
America's role on the world stage. So, um, you know, a significant number of, of Americans think that it's going to lead to, uh, you know, a, a less important role for the U.S. Um, and, you know, less influence in world affairs, um, you know, this whole crisis. So, and, and that's particularly true among, you know, as you would expect, Democrats. I believe it's 56% of liberal Democrats uh, say that they expect the U.S. to kind of emerge from this crisis with less influence in world affairs. Um, and, you know, your, your findings from your studies in the U.K. is really interesting. You know, we, um, you know, of course, do a lot on what the world thinks of the United States at, at Pew. Um, we haven't collected any data However, since the outbreak, uh, we're going to do that uh, here pretty soon. But, you know, what we've seen in recent years, of course, is, uh, you know, as you know, a, a big decline in America's overall image around the world uh, since President Trump took office. It's especially steep, uh, this decline in Europe. Um, and, you know, he's done better, essentially. President Trump's gotten better ratings on the kind of ideological right in many ways. So if you're seeing a decline there, I think that's a really interesting kind of trend. Um, and what we've seen in our polling about the U.S. too in Europe and elsewhere um, is that, you know, part of this um, decline in America's stature on the world stage, essentially, is tied to this fact that people see the U.S. withdrawing from sort of leadership positions around the world, withdrawing from international engagement, you know, pulling out of things like the Paris Climate Accords, pulling out of trade agreements, uh, withdrawing from the Iran nuclear deal. You know, these kind of things that have happened where the U.S. is sort of stepping back from international cooperation, um, these are the kind of things that have driven negative sentiments about the U.S. in many ways. So, you know, it'll be an interesting question to look at what this particular crisis does uh, in terms of that trend we've been seeing for the last few years. And it sounds like, you know, you've got some interesting data already, you know, pointing us towards a, a seeing a more negative uh, image for the U.S. as a result of the pandemic. You mentioned that you're also uh, working on uh, attitudes in Germany as well towards the United States um, and, and also just generally how they see uh, other countries' performance during the pandemic. What does the view look like from Germany? I mean, something that is strikingly similar in, in our UK research is that uh, Brits also agree that Germany have done a really good job in the pandemic. So I think they really won the soft power war during the pandemic. Um, how, what's the view like there? How are they looking at the global landscape? Who do they see as their key allies and uh, who do they look up to on the world stage? Yeah, and this is uh, this is part of some research we've done over the last few years uh, in partnership with uh, Kerber Stiftung uh, in, in Germany, where we poll in the U.S. and, and they do some polling in Germany. I mean, I, I thought a couple of things were really um, sort of interesting um, out of this most recent round of that that polling that we did. One is um, in Germany. There's a question we've asked over the last few years about essentially like you know who's more important to Germany. Uh, you know, is it the relationship with the United States or the relationship with China? And in the past, we've seen, you know, on balance, people in Germany saying uh, the U.S. And uh, that's changed in this most recent survey to being evenly split almost between uh, saying it's the relationship with the U.S. Uh, versus the relationship with China. So, you know, uh, not only is it going to be really interesting to see what this um, uh, pandemic does in terms of uh, influencing how people think about America's role in world affairs, what's it going to do to their impressions of China. Um, you know, in Germany, at least, people are actually seeing that relationship with China being more important than ever, and maybe the, the relationship with the U.S. being on the decline. Um, you know, as, a, as you know, we've done some, some work uh, in the U.S. looking at views towards China as well, and, um, you know, there we've seen a real uptick in negative attitudes about China. Uh, among Americans. Uh, it was 66% uh, of Americans saying they have an unfavorable opinion of China in this most recent survey that we conducted. Uh, and that's the highest we've ever seen since we first asked the question back in 2005. And, uh, you know, like so many other issues in the U.S., it's polarized a bit. Uh, you know, Republicans are more negative about China than Democrats are. But even among Democrats, it's a majority saying they have a negative view of China right now. And that's gone up over the last couple of years. So, uh, you know, yes, you do see some partisan differences, but right now, 
uh, is both Democrats and Republicans in the U.S. saying they have a negative view about China, and uh, they increasingly see China as a threat to the U.S. That's really interesting. Our polling is finding that British attitudes towards China are even more negative than they are in the United States and Australia. Um, we're now up to 83% of Brits do not trust China to act responsibly in the world, um, which is really extraordinary, particularly because they are closing the gap so rapidly on uh, Iran and also North Korea, who are the two who just kind of jump ahead of China. But, the, but that gap is narrowing all the time. So um, it is. it does seem to be a really kind of extreme position in the United Kingdom. Um, how do you think all of these sorts of trends, you mentioned uh, some of uh, Donald Trump's acts as president, sort of, um, I, su I suppose, kind of pulling at the edges of, of the liberal world order in terms of those kind of multilateral institutions, the sense that of this kind of America first agenda that was leaning towards isolationism. Um, where do you see American domestic attitudes on these sorts of issues. Is there a real kind of push towards uh, isolationism and uh, I suppose a less active United States in the world? Uh, what's the kind of, um, I suppose, what's the mandate for this kind of position? Is this just sort of Trump's base and it's actually a relatively small but um, really won over part of the population? Or is this, are these attitudes that are sort of starting to seep more widely across the population? Yeah, but it, it, you know, of course, it's going to be really interesting to see what this uh, crisis does to uh, attitudes about engaging the rest of the world, right? And as you know, you know, when people see a threat, often it leads them to sort of turn inward. Uh, on the other hand, maybe it, 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 it makes the case to some people that we need more international cooperation to deal with these kind of global challenges, right? Um, we've got a little bit of evidence about that in this most recent survey that we've conducted in the U.S. And, you know, it, what it shows is that there's growing division over some of these questions. Uh, there's a, a question we've been asking for a while about whether the U.S. does um, uh, too much, too little, or about the right amount to help solve uh, world problems. And uh, what we've seen over the, uh, the past couple of years is that the percentage of Republicans who say we do too much has gone way up. And it's actually gone down over time among Democrats, right? So, you know, very different views among Republicans and Democrats about whether we need to be engaging more with the rest of the world to solve global challenges or whether we actually uh, you know, aren't, you know, we're already doing too much to engage with the rest of the world when it comes to solving these big global challenges. So, um, you know, it's another instance of where there's just very different uh, opinions in the United States along partisan lines about how to approach something like international engagement. Really interesting. I mean, the other question I suppose that we're grappling with here in the UK, because we've got this paradigm always of sort of um, kind of Western liberal cooperation, our sort of sphere is always thinking kind of regionally about this transatlantic relationship and our relationship with Europe. And of course, with our transatlantic relationship becoming a bit more fraught and sort of evolving in strange ways because of America's shifting role in the world, there is this question about um, does Europe step in and try and um, be a more forthright actor, a global collective actor, um, to sort of uh, become maybe that kind of linchpin at the heart of the Western liberal uh, alliance. And do you see, I mean, I know you've done quite a lot of work over the years on Europe. Um, how do these questions of the idea of the EU as a global leader play into um, Kind of, I mean, there's been a lot of upheaval, obviously, in the EU over recent years. Is there much of a mandate in Europe for the EU be becoming much more involved in global leadership? Yeah, and of course, I, I know you've done a lot of work on this too over time. I mean, what you know, what our our work on the European views about the EU, you know, what's interesting to me is the extent to which people, uh, you know, do believe in the broad principles of uh, the European project, right? And they, they think that the European Union stands for peace, you know, on the sort of international front. Uh, they think it stands for uh, democracy. They think it stands for prosperity. Uh, their frustrations are with how it actually operates, right? They, they feel like it, uh, you know, is out of touch. You know, they feel like uh, people in Brussels don't really know what's happening 
uh, with people throughout Europe, right? Um, so, you know, it's, they want Europe to play a role in international affairs and they believe in the kind of values it represents on the world stage. Uh, my sense is that um, what their concerns are about are about how it actually operates, right? Um, so, you know, I think in, in some ways it, it, it depends in terms of Europe's role uh, on these kind of issues. Uh, you know, can Brussels prove that it's in touch with average citizens and can it prove that it's effective in dealing with these kind of issues? I can probably imagine that we will start to see the EU trying to step up further on, on the issue of climate change um, and maybe use that as a test case for a kind of um, uh, experimental new foray into a, a sort of um, global leadership role for the EU as well. Um, just finally, coming back to the US context, uh, how big a role do you think all of this, I mean, there's obviously big questions about the pandemic and the role it's going to play in the US elections. One imagines it will be seismic. It is the only story of the year. Um, but at the same time, this particular role that foreign policy and the kind of geopolitical dimensions around the pandemic might play into the US elections. There are some people who argue that China is actually going to be the central focus point. I find that an interesting hypothesis because there does seem to be quite a lot of bipartisan um, support around, particularly in Congress, around the kind of shared approach on China. Um, but do you think this sense of Donald Trump's kind of performance on the world stage, maybe his relationship with WHO, maybe the way in which the US has been interacting with some other nations during the crisis, maybe perhaps seem to not be as cooperative in some areas than some others. Um, and then this big China question, do you think these will all be pivotal in the US elections? Yeah, I mean, certainly, I think there's probably going to be a role for you know all those issues in one way or another uh, when it comes to the election. Now, you know, um, obviously, the, you know, the public health aspects of this are going to be very important. The economic aspects of this crisis are going to be, uh, you know, very important. Uh, you know, the economic devastation has, has just been huge, and you know how well the Trump administration handles that, uh, you know, how well the economy does. Those kind of things are going to matter a lot. But I do think that the international aspects of it could be important as well. Um, you know, as I said, Americans are appearing very polarized um, along this kind of, you know, about this broad issue of international engagement and what America's role in world affairs uh, should be. So I think we're going to hear a lot about that. And as you say, you know, China is getting a lot of attention right now. Uh, there's every reason to think it will continue to do so over the next few months. Uh, it is an, an issue that's um, on the minds of both Democrats and Republicans. Republicans. And one of the things I think we've seen a little bit over the last few years is that the kind of issue mix of what people think about when they think about China has changed a little bit. It's become a little bit more diverse. Uh, you know, a few years ago, uh, when we asked you, what are your concerns about China? It tended to be mostly economic issues, things like the trade deficit, the perception that the U.S. is losing jobs to China. Those things are, are certainly still important. Um, but what we've also seen is that more people are concerned about uh, cyber attacks from China than used to be the case. Uh, you know, human rights is a big issue among a lot of people, particularly on the democratic side. Uh, so you know, the, the relationship with China is obviously multifaceted. And in terms of US public opinion, they're thinking now about uh, those various facets and they've got concerns about China on many dimensions, you know, economics is still a big, big part of it, but it's on other issues as well. Something really extraordinary, uh, the other day I came across a um, piece of research that I think you'd done in uh, 2011, and it was actually showing this really positive uptick in favorable attitudes towards China. And it feels like we have really come uh, full circle since that moving from- Exactly. You know, moving from regarding China as a kind of economic challenger um, and per perhaps a member of the kind of global community to this much stronger moral judgment in our attitudes towards China now. I think that's right. You know, exactly. The, the um, mix of issues that, that people are thinking about is a little bit different and it is along more lines than just economic competition. 
And the number, there's a separate question we ask people about you know, whether they see China's power and influence as a threat to the United States. And that number has gone up as well, uh, you know, over the last few years. So they're seeing China in a more negative light, but they're also thinking about China as a threat to the United States um, more so than they were a few years ago. It's really extraordinary stuff. Um, we'll leave it there today, but uh, these are obviously some of the most important issues for the work that we're doing at the British Foreign Policy Group and will be incredibly important um, in the broader geopolitical discussion and particularly heading um, as we inch closer to the US elections in November. So hopefully we can check in with you uh, a little bit further down the line along towards that. But for now, thank you very much, Richard. Thanks so much. And yeah, happy to come back anytime.